a horrible fumble from Espen Bordson. Kitson's cross and Lampard's drive squirmed away from the big keeper and Trevor didn't have to be particularly clever to tuck that one away. The Derby deadlock is broken. And what a start to the second half for West Ham. Sinclair with an excellently executed effort. He had plenty to do here, but how he did it. Fantastic finishing. Sinclair. Chris Armstrong's fifth goal in his last six appearances. Sets up quite a finale. Zillula's corner. Rather easily knocked in in the end by Armstrong. Perfectly placed. from him and Cernicek in touching it just set it up for Zola took some of the pace off it and uh, it couldn't have fallen more kindly for the little man but he put it away it was a very well worked goal and Alex Anderson had a look up to see what was on what movement was coming from Booth and he got the Between defender and goalkeeper, Chelsea won, Sheffield Wednesday won. By Marcus Gale, but on a day when we came to praise Duncan Ferguson, it's another former Everton player who has sadly made the headlines for Newcastle. Speeds poor pass, Gale's clinical finish. Warren Barton, up towards Ferguson. The Wales remain very tight, and that's the ball back, Gillespie. Got a hang one to the back post, it's towards Ferguson. It'll come now to the Peruvian, who scores. And Solano becomes the first Peruvian ever to score in the Premiership. And it was Gillespie's run that created all the mayhem. And Solano took aim, and Sullivan had no chance. Position. So it's going to need a burst from midfield. This is Solano. It's not a bad cross either. It's Ferguson! With his foot as well. What a start! Newcastle ahead, thanks to the new boy. Lovely cross by the other goal scorer. And Ferguson, for the second time this season, bangs it past Sullivan. But this time he's in black and white. Well, sloppy play by Wimbledon. This is Ferguson again. Ooh, to Stephen Glass. Two minutes we're going to have. Two minutes of stoppage time. Newcastle leading by two goals to one. It's high towards Duncan Hurt. Ferguson! Oh, what a soft goal! But does he care? Of course he doesn't. He's got two on his debut. And it's a winning debut now for Newcastle United and for Duncan Ferguson. One with a foot and one with the head. Sullivan really won't want to see that one too often. Pierre Van Hooydonk, who will claim the assist, but a 
undoubtedly it was a goal of Doogie Friedman. Everton arrived at the Valley in search of only their third away win of the season, minus, of course, the player who'd been their talisman and top scorer, Duncan Ferguson. A harsh reality that some fans had still to come to terms with. I'm gutted. I've, I've had, like, two hours sleep for three days. I'm so gutted. I couldn't believe it. Have you got over the shock yet? <laughs> no, I don't think so yet. But a win, a win today might do us uh, a world of good. And so it was to be, thanks to 19-year-old Danny Kadamatri, who set Everton on their way in first-half injury time, showing the sort of pace and finishing he's becoming renowned for. Beating a charging Sasa Illich to a long through ball, leaving the Charlton keeper high and dry, and calmly putting the visitors ahead. It's a good ball over, over the top by Michael Ball, and I've managed to get in between the defender and the uh, keeper. And just knock it past him and just slap it in there. And, um, you know, the managers kept the same team. Uh, and we've come out today and we've battled hard and have been fortunate enough to get on the score sheet. Everton should have been two up early in the second when the other half of their exciting young strike force, Ibrahima Bakayoko, was felled in the penalty area. But Michael Ball, who'd scored a penalty to secure victory over Newcastle on Monday, this time misplaced a poor effort. And Illich made amends for his earlier mistake. Charlton poured men forward and were rewarded with an equaliser 18 minutes from time. How about that for a strike from Mark Kinsella? But within a minute, Everton had restored their lead. Kedamartri getting his second of the match. The England under-21, who came up to the Goodison ranks, making sure Everton left the valley with a priceless victory. And after a torrid week, the manager could at least celebrate six points in as many days. You know, Duncan was a big part. Not a favourite over the past few seasons. And Wales themselves have had to um, uh, adjust to, to losing him and uh, he got two goals at Newcastle today so uh, mm -hmm. you know they've got benefits from him but uh, as I said to our younger players it does give them the opportunity to come in and show what they can do they, they want to play um, and although they're only uh, 19 in Katamatri's case uh, Bakayoko only 21 um, you know they want to do well you just had a very long chat in your office with Walter Smith you can tell me it's none of my business of course but you know what were you talking about <laughs> Well, we're talking about one or two things, pressures of uh, management here as opposed to Scotland, and uh, we had quite a laugh, you know, one or two things come up. He's a good guy, Walter, he's, he's a very solid man, and uh, I think that uh, the things that went on at Everton last week would have upset him. Um, there was no need for it, I think, and, uh, you know, if, you, if you're working together, there's no need for that sort of thing to happen. And, uh, yeah, but they've gone and got two results, which will soften the blow, I think. So a new era without Duncan Ferguson begins well for Everton. £7 million richer for having sold their former captain. They played an exciting passing game at speed and saw a young talent who cost them nothing secure a morale. ...included new £1.6 million signing Andy Impey in their side, while Coventry had only one recognised striker in their lineup. Darren Huckabee combined well with makeshift striker Dron Saltbeck, normally a midfielder, for Coventry's best chance of the first half. Solved was playing up front in place of the injured Noel Whelan. 
Leicester didn't create many opportunities in the opening period. Graham Fenton's run and shot wasn't too much of a problem for Coventry keeper Magnus Hedman. Two minutes into the second half came the game's main talking point. Frank Sinclair was booked for a second time and sent off by referee Mike Riley. Sinclair was livid, claiming afterwards that he'd touched the ball. Leicester manager Martin O'Neill called the decision harsh, but added that the referee was going to re-examine the incident on video. Andy Impey made a solid debut for Leicester, but the ball seemed destined not to go in, particularly after a glaring miss by the Coventry captain Gary McAllister. But Coventry did break the deadlock 11 minutes from the end. Saltved's flick on for Huckabee to score his fourth goal of the season. It wasn't the winner though, Leicester came back a minute from time to level. Coventry didn't clear, and Emil Heskey stopped Leicester going down to a third successive defeat. Coventry won, Leicester won. And were unable to call upon the services of 12 senior players for this match because of injuries. So Moroccan international Hassan Kaklou made his debut. It nearly was a very special first appearance for the Moroccan, who's on trial at the Dell from the French club saint Etienne. The only goal came after 33 minutes. Argentinian defender Horatio Carbonari with the curling shot. So Hampton's appeals for handball by Paolo Wanchop turned down. The replay clearly shows Wanchop didn't handle the ball. Southampton tried to get back into the match in the second half. James Beatty wasted their best chance. While Mark Hughes, still looking for his first goal for the Saints, tested Derby's Mark Poom. It didn't look as though it would be Southampton's afternoon. At the other end, Lee Carsley came close for Derby. Afterwards, Southampton manager Dave Jones was furious with referee Stephen Lodge. The official waved play on after Beattie went down in the area. And again after Mark Hughes was grounded. Jones described the referee's performance as the worst he'd seen in years. Southampton nil, Derby won. Poole hoping to keep the ball rolling as they hosted the last place Rovers. Liverpool on the attack. Steve Stone, the through ball to Robbie Fowler. Sweet touch pass to Paul Ince. And Ince finds nothing but net. The Liverpool captain putting the home side up 1-0. Check it out from long distance. He goes up top right there in the corner and he got it. Fowler who scored the hat-trick last week sets up Ince beautifully. Ince will get it past Rovers keeper John Filer. Then just two minutes later, it's Ince finding Fowler in the box. Filer makes the save, but Michael Owen is there to clean up the mess. Owen, his ninth league goal this season. Liverpool up 2-0. Owen very fortunate on this one. The rebound hits right off of him and into the net. He will take it, though. So will Liverpool as Frenchman Gerard Houllier sees his side. Recapture their form. 2-0 the final.